seat that was vacated by Assemblyman Dante Acosta's election to the 38th Assembly District. And we are trying to give all of the candidates and applicants an opportunity to speak uh, to the public on air uh, and kind of speak to the issues of Santa Clarita. So Robert Cooper, you're sitting right next to me. Thank you for coming down to the studio and uh, talking to us. Absolutely. Um, for our listeners who may not uh, have heard your name before, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and, and your involvement in Santa Clarita? Absolutely. So the name again is uh, Robert Cooper, and uh, I've been a resident of Santa Clarita now for uh, 16 years. Um, I am currently the uh, pastor of a church here in Santa Clarita called Berean Baptist Family Fellowship. We meet at Helmers Elementary School, which is right there off at the Coro and uh, Grandview. Uh, I'm a father of two. Um, and in addition to all of that, I'm also a professor of education at UCLA. Oh, right on. What do you teach at UCLA? Uh, educational politics and uh, leadership. Oh, interesting. So how, what, what aspect of, the, of education does, does the politics and the leadership side of it kind of address? Yeah, so it's really trying to take, emerging this idea of what's the role of school leaders in bringing about quality education and public education for all students. And that's really what my research is about, is how do we create both excellence and equity in public education. Interesting. And, and if I may ask, what brought you to the uh, Santa Clarita Valley 16 years ago? 16 years ago, I, you know, I think I was wanting what everybody else wanted. I wanted a safe community, wanted a place that had good schools, had uh, starting a family. And so uh, came 16 years ago when I got a job at UCLA. Um, so talk to me a little bit about um, what you see as the priorities for the Santa Clarita City Council for the next year, if they named you to the body. Yeah. So, you know, I think uh, one of the things about Santa Clarita, I think it's a, it's a good place to be, a good place to raise family. You know, but, but as we continue to grow as a city, some of the things I think that we take uh, as hallmarks of our city begin to get compromised. So we, we, we take a look at things like public safety. We want to make sure that public safety remains um, a, a top priority for the city, you know, so that as we continue to grow, I understand that the uh, crime rate is growing, not alarmingly, but enough to say, let's take a step back and let's think about that. Also, in terms of making sure that schools continue to be our top priority, and not just schools, but education, right? So I'm really a, a big proponent of making sure that the city continues to provide educational opportunities, both inside the classroom, but also outside the classroom, because the soccer field is a, le is a learning opportunity, right? The, the uh, uh, skate park is a learning opportunity. So all these different places that we see, uh, we have to ensure that young people and our citizens are having opportunities to learn. And you made some some interesting points as far as, um, you know, with the city's growth. Can you talk to me about your perspective on how you've seen it change over the last uh, 16 years since you've moved up here? Yes. So when I started, I, I felt like this was a very small town kind of uh, atmosphere. You go to the market, you see people you know. And I think as time has gone on, that that element is starting to leave a little bit. And so, and I think some of that change is good, right? But I think what, what brought me here to Santa Clarita 16 years ago is what I want to continue to make sure that we have. And I think that that is an environment where schools are, are, are good, uh, there's a public safety, but also the atmosphere of a community in which people are proud to live in is also here. And I think that's what brought me to this point of saying, what can I do to, to be part of the city council? And so our next question, I try to ask um, people about what city council has been doing to see if, if they're kind of watching and, and, and where they fall as far as um, the current city leadership. Yes. So I wanted to see if you could uh, pick an example of something over the last few years uh, that you like that city council has done and maybe an action that, you know, you would do differently if you were on that board. Yeah. So I, I think in terms of what they have done well is, is the expansion of this new hall area and the library. You know, as a scholar, I spent a lot of time in libraries, so the opportunity to come and spend time at the uh, the New Hall Library has just really been uh, a real treat. I mean, I think they've done a really nice job of really thinking about what are the needs of the community and then building it there. So I thought that that was, a, I think that that's a really good uh, example of kind of the use of uh, our city leadership. You know, in terms, in terms of what I would do differently, I guess one of the, the, the most current issues is uh, the election itself, sure, yeah, right. And um, while I certainly benefit from having this kind of selection process, it, it seems to me that a number of the residents really spoke and said that maybe a special election might have made more sense. And I'm not sure that I would have made that same decision because I don't have all the information. But it just seems initially, my initial thought and reaction would be um, in the interest of transparency and in the interest of public voice, I might have gone with a special election. Okay. Well, we have a little bit of time left. You've answered all my questions, so I appreciate that. Um, is there another message that you'd like to get out there? Maybe something else we can talk about to, to you know, 
get your message out to the city council and to the residents. Yeah, I guess what's important for me is that, you know, again, my involvement in the city has evolved around like being a, a soccer coach and being on the uh, site council for Helmers Elementary and for Rio Norte Junior High School, those kinds of things. But I think what's important for the city council to think about is you need someone who has some basic skills. And I, and I think it's one is to be able to read information, a lot of information, quickly digest it, synthesize it, be able to make uh, a clear and articulate argument about a position. And I think I'm in a position and a well position to do that. Awesome. Robert Cooper, thank you for taking the time to come down here and talk to us about the issues. Thank you. Um, and good luck on January 17th. Again, City Council will be making that selection. Uh, and so we'll find out who our next council person will be. Thank you.